side. But if this happens, you stick your hand right here. If this happens, and then a man puts his hands on you and you don't want him there, you gotta get him off. So we're simply gonna grab the wrist, put at the pinky finger, okay? And then I look, I just got some hands. That's all I got, right? I'm just gonna turn him around, boom. And there he is. And now from here, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick the knee, boom, and I'm gonna take off running. Alright? Yeah, I'm going to talk about RAM. RAM is a great program if you really want to change your life spiritually. We have a pastor that teaches biblical sound doctrine. Now you can come in this program and just go through the motion and leave and go right back to prison. But if you come here and get a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, who will help you stay out free. Because only He can set you free. I came to this program from prison. I was convicted of murder. They gave me life with parole, 25 minimum sentence. I ended up going to 27 because the family wanted me to stay in prison for the rest of my life. Mm. But that's not how God wanted it. God had a better plan. So I came out in August 24, 2017, and I've been in this program. It's really helped me grow spiritually. Amen. You know, I, I accepted the Lord in prison. Even though I grew up in church, I knew of the Lord, but I didn't know really, really know Him as a personal relationship. My grandfather's a pastor, my uncles and cousins are pastors. I grew up in this thing. But you know, you can grow up in this thing and still go to hell. Sure. You have to have your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But by my own sin, I took me to a place where I can be still, and find out now I, I accepted Jesus as my own Lord and Savior. But this program has helped me establish that, you know, foundation to keep on walking with Him, to stay focused. Because apart from Him, I am nothing. Amen. Apart from Him, I end up going back to prison if I don't stay focused on Him. All right. So that's all I have to share. God bless. I was, one morning I woke up and then I called my mom to come help me because I was doing drugs and I was doing all kind of bad stuff. So I called my mom to help me and then to come pick me up. And then when I was waiting for them at the bus stop, these boys came, they just pulled up and then they hopped out and then they was telling me that I owed them money, but I didn't owe them nothing. So they pulled me to the bus stop and then they sat me down and that one boy that asked me, told me that I owed him money, he forced me twice. And then they said that if I didn't give them their money, then they was gonna pull me into their van, take me into the mountains and tie me up. And then they forced me twice and then this guy, he was a UFC fighter and then he pulled up in the middle of the road and he hopped out, he called out those boys that was doing that to me. And then once they seen who that was, they hopped into their van and then they yelled out, they was like, yeah, if you like scrap, come, come follow me, boom. And then he hopped in his car and then they took off and then he followed them. And then just after all that happened, Jeff pulled up five minutes after that. And then I hopped in with him and then I came to this RAM program. And then, yeah, that's everything that happened. Who's Jeff? Jeff, he's the leader of the RAM program. And then, yeah, he's been helping me a lot these past times. How long have you been in? A week? I've been in a week and a half. A week and a half? Yeah. So can you tell me something that's helped you out this week? Something that's helped me out this week, um, just every morning coming to devotions and church. It's been helping me out a lot, getting my mind off things. And yesterday we went on the boat, I had some fun. Just doing, just having fun. Amen. All right. Good morning, everybody. A um, little bit about myself. I came into Ram um, originally. Uh, my mom had passed away, and then after that, I didn't know how to cope with it, so I took matters into my own hands. Ran out, started hanging out with the wrong crowds, wrong people. Ended up addicted to drugs. Uh, ended up getting arrested, came out to RAM, and um, ever since I've been in RAM, God has been working in my life. Uh, something that I learned this week that kind of stuck with me is uh, Pastor Todd preached a message on temptation and the different things you got to do to avoid it. And I realized and remembered that I wasn't reading my Bible. When, when things started to get tough. So um, it's been an encouraging, uh, it's been an encouragement 
um, to have Brother Todd here this week uh, and see how he how he uh, talks with people and interacts with people. Uh, so yeah. Amen. Uh, my name is Bert Seekwig. I'm uh, here at Winter Baptist Church. I uh, uh, gave my life to uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, new, uh, I'm a new uh, Christian of Christ. Uh, newborn Christian. And um, I've been here for like five years in the program. And um, I got a lot of victories here at uh, the RAM program. Amen. Um, I've been a, a full on chronic for uh, maybe 20 years. I started at uh, 15, and uh, I thought that was the way of life, and um, that's what we do here in Hawaii, we party, and I carried that out to California, and that's what they do out there too, so there was no escape for me, no no, um, no way out of it, and I got in trouble with the law, and um, I got sent here to the RAM program. And there was a way out. God gave me a way out, and He showed me the way for me. How the RAM program is worked for me is that it uh, gives me a place where I can, I'm surrounded by sober support. Amen. And um, it helps me to. Uh, Yolanda, um, before RAM, I was incarcerated, and I heard about this program. Um, I heard that you could have children, so I chose this program out of four. Um, got here and. Uh, <laughs> I got here and it's it's changed my life. I got all my kids. I have three of my kids living with me. Amen. I have eight plus women and their kids. Some have children. Um, so from incarcerated to uh, getting out and having your children, a lot yes. of ladies that get incarcerated get out. There's such a big struggle. Within six months. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, what are some things that have helped you out this week here at the program? Um, the ladies, especially Auntie Janda, one of the older ladies in my house. She's been a real inspiration, um, very supportive. I can talk to her about anything, and she gives me um, positive feedback regarding the Lord. It's Janda from the island of Oahu in Hawaii, and um, the RAM program has given me a purpose, a life that <clears throat> there's no words to express. I'm gonna give you a little history of myself. I was on the streets for 11 years I had a boyfriend that came to this program four different times. The last time he got it right, he's got his life together today. I then fell once again. I did eight straight years, 13 good, and I went right back to jail. Why? Because I thought I was hit, slick, and cool. Well, and also because I didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. While in prison, talking to my boyfriend, um, I said, Johnny, you have to help me. Get me out. Bail me out. Bail me out. And he said, can't do that Janda he says you got to make a decision for yourself and it's not by you getting plucked out of that place just so you can go back on the streets and I said call Pastor Kevin please because I recalled I brought him here four different times about 10 12 years ago and I said please call Pastor Kevin and he said he did called him up again told me that my bed was secure and all of this that I have to wait for the courts to release me well I didn't believe him so I called, and by the grace of God, Pastor Kevin answered the phone. And I said, Pastor, you got to get me out. This is Janda. This is Johnny's girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. And he said, Janda, we got to wait on the courts, but we'll be there to pick you up. I just like what you shared that day in church because me and my husband used that technique because one day I wasn't having it, and he's like, why don't we pray? And I was like, no, I don't feel like praying. And he was like, okay, dear Lord, thank you for Whatever it is, and after you, after praying, I felt so much better. Amen. Amen. Hey, my name is Shaw, and I'm uh, 29 years old now. Um, when I was 16 years old, I picked it up attempted murder, one charge, 11 counts. Attempted murder, two, three counts. Commission of firearm and use of a felony, and many more charges for gang violence and just basic stupidity. And at the time, I didn't really care about anything in life. I thought it was all like a Grand Theft Auto game. And you know, as time goes on, you start to grow and learn and hear different things and try different things. Only I tried it in a cell. And the way I learned was two hard times, you know, winning my battles by myself in solitary confinement. And ultimately, within the last five years, I found the Lord that led me to this program, the RAM. The only program that would take me out of prison 
being a high custody inmate, not following any of the rules, not applying for anything with my parole. You know, the only program that when I wrote one time, I went back in the and they said, please come to us. We'll give you one shot. Please come to us. Fought for me, here I am. 12 years later, 29 years old. I was 16 when I went in. Been out for six months now, doing good. I got a car, got a job. I got people who love me in my life. Amen. I left all those guys behind who told me they love me and I thought love me that I fought for and died for, I would have died for. They were nobody to me. Found out after all the smoke cleared, my family, my real family, were there the whole time and I let them just hang. Now I'm finding new family. Pastor Todd, I appreciate you coming down this week and blessing us with your presence. We need lines like you in the world. It is old school. Hey, it works. Get the job done. The kitchen's over there. That's the kitchen. Yeah. That's the house. How many are in that house right there? Uh, come this one first. So we got one guy there. Two guys here. Two guys in this one. On the wasp. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Aloha, my name is Kevin Akana, the pastor of Winter Baptist Church. And um, in our ministry several years ago, on um, March the 4th, 2000, or March 8th, 2004, my father had passed away. I got called by the, by the medical examiners telling me that they found him dead on King Street on the island of Oahu, downtown area. And they called me and they told me that he had passed away and um, they found him dead on the street because he was high on drugs and overdosed on crystal meth. So that day, before I went to the medical examiners to to um, get his personal belongings and to, um, to, to see him down there, <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me and I felt that he wanted me to start a ministry to help people like my father. You know, that he had already, there's nothing I could have done for him at that point. But there's other people that struggle with drugs, local Hawaiian people, people on this island that struggle with crystal meth. So I started the, the RAM program with the help of August Ka'ava. And we went ahead and started it. We started, we housed our first person on uh, in, in December of 2006. And we housed our first person and then went to our second person. And before you know it, we had about 16. Today we have about th between 30 and 40. Uh, we've housed, we've had probably uh, hundreds and even close to, or maybe even over a thousand people since we started. And the RAM ministry, we bring people from jail, from the street, people that are homeless, people struggling with drugs. We bring them into our program and our number one priority is to teach them about Jesus Christ and how they can be saved, how they can know for sure they're on their way to heaven. And then uh, and when they get, after they get saved in our our number one job after that is to is to teach them how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and grow in their faith. Now, not everybody gets saved. We can't force them. But while they're with us, we just keep, keep teaching them about Jesus Christ, pointing them to Jesus, teaching them the Word of God, and, and then also helping them to, to get a job, to be able to support themselves, to get all their legal issues cleared up, and to um, get their life in order. And that's why it's called RAM, Rebuilders Addictions Ministry. Do the so that's people, what they do. Do the people that uh, come to RAM, do they, do they get to live there for free? No, well, when they first come in, we um, if they're coming in from jail or from prison, we have them come up with the first month's rent. And uh, there's also an application fee, because we have to go to court, we have to do a lot of correspondence, and sometimes it takes a lot of time. So we have them pay $150 for that, and then uh, first month's rent is 350 and that's for, um, it's 350 as long as they're in the work, the, the work therapy program. And some of them, when they're coming from jail, they'll get the money together, because they're trying to get out. But there's some people that are unable to come up with that, and so we bring them in for free. Um, you know, if that's, it's a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. If they're in that situation, we'll bring them in for free. 
and we'll try to get them connected with the welfare system. They can be on welfare for two months. Then after that, they will get off of welfare and then they'll get a job. Then they pay rent with their with their money from their work. How much does how much do you pay for the two facilities and how much do you pay for the church a month? With all of our facilities, uh, the church we pay six thousand dollars a month. Hawaii is very. It sounds crazy. It was a very expensive place to live. And Brother Todd, you know, he's been in our church. He knows it's very, it's run down, it's an older building. Um, it's nothing spectacular, but in Hawaii, it's very expensive. The house that they live at, I mean, some of the guys that live in, in, in the area that they live, it's very primitive. Um, it's not luxurious at all. How much does it but cost? But it so? costs, uh, that, that property costs 6000 or about 5000 uh, 800 a month a month for that one and then the other facilities about 4,000 little over 4,000 plus ladies. utilities I'd say we probably pay with all our facilities uh, we probably probably pay about seventeen thousand dollars a month with utilities and rent so they that's why we have to charge them rent too because we have to pay rent for, for our facilities but um but the Lord provides um, and we also do work therapy and we have contracts so these, they work in the program and we get paid for that, which also helps to um, to fund the, the program. What are uh, some ways you've been encouraged this week? Well, this week has been, has been a tremendous encouragement to me as a pastor to have Brother Todd Monaghan with us because um, he was showing people how to be saved and we had many people who trust Christ as their Savior, not just at Ram, but even people in the community around us you know, at the stores, at uh, the convenience stores and other places. And some of the activities that we did all along the way, uh, Brother Todd was leading people to Christ and also showing our people that they can do it. Just being an encouragement and, uh, and reminding us of our job to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's all Christians' jobs. It's all of our job to do it. And Brother Todd shows us that. I mean, he goes and does it in our community. Someone who's not even from here and yet has been effective just because he makes the attempt. And so he reminded us. He, he's, he's, been a re, he's been a reminder to me, to my family, to our church, to the people in Ram about how um, easy it is. that if you can talk, if you're a Christian and you have a voice, that you and I can win souls to Christ. And we've seen him do it and uh, we can do it. And I know more of our people have been encouraged to do it um, as a result of him being with us. So it's been a tremendous encouragement. Whenever there's souls getting saved, whenever you see God working, there's always an encouragement. So I've been uplifted and encouraged to have uh, Brother Todd with us. Amen. Yeah. 
that's good singing. Just believe and you'll receive blessings of eternity. Pastor Sam Morosco, we uh, recently <laughs> we recently started the Rock Point Baptist Church. <laughs> just keep going. We're gonna run with this. We're gonna do this. This is what we, this, these preachers these preachers I'm are Sam just Morosco. crazy. We recently Sam started, I recently started the Rock Point Baptist Church in uh, Mililani. We're right next to an army base, military base, uh, the Wheeler Army Airfield, and the Schofield Army Base. And uh, had the opportunity to have Brother Todd Monaghan with us uh, about a week and a half ago. And he was with us for a special Sunday that we had. We called it Harvest Sunday. And we did it up real big. We promoted him coming as an MMA, uh, former MMA fighter and evangelist. And, and uh, he preached a great message connected with our folks there. And uh, we had several saved that Sunday. And um, we were privileged to have him uh, the following Wednesday for our Bible study. And he just, uh, he does a great job. He did a great job all week. I'm thankful that it worked out for him to be with us. We can't, typically we can't afford uh, to bring a guest speaker in and uh, Brother Todd was able to come up with uh, finances on his own to, to come out here uh, to take a mission trip and be a blessing to us and to several other ministries as well. Um, I know he was a blessing at the Windward Baptist Church and then um, was able to introduce him to Pastor uh, Soto here and he's over here uh, doing some soul winning. Uh, it's Halloween night, <clears throat> and uh, Pastor Soto had a booth set up with a lot of his folks, and uh, we were just going around uh, trying to uh, witness to folks, give them an invitation to church. And um, but I can't, uh, I can't recommend. He's not asking me to recommend him, but I, um, uh, Brother Todd was a great blessing to us. I believe the Lord's hand is upon him, and uh, he's a man that walks with God. He's an encouragement to me. He challenges to me to be more of a personal soul winner, and I need people like that in my life. So I appreciate you, Brother Todd. Thanks for everything you did for us this last couple awesome. weeks. So, And I would just like to say to those of you that uh, think Hawaii just a beautiful island, people, I got here, there's chickens running around the streets, there's cats everywhere, there's... There's, people don't think there's, but there's cockroaches literally everywhere. It doesn't matter if you got a beautiful house, a, 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 a fancy house, a mid-grade level house. And another thing that people don't realize is the homeless people. There are so many homeless people. And every single one of the homeless people that I talked to uh, was either saved already or they really weren't there. They, were, they really weren't there mentally. Um, and one more question for you, Raph. If... Uh, if there was one, what is what is your what is your biggest needs on the island? Our biggest need would be uh, for co-laborers, and uh, we're praying that God will continue to send us families that we could uh, partner with to get us to move this ministry forward. And um, again, you just pray that God will bring the right people, the right fit, so that we can continue to push forward and see people saved and lives changed. I'm glad for the team and the the church that God has put together already. But uh, again, we just need cold laborers. We need people praying for us and uh, rallying behind us and just supporting what we're doing here. So this is not a big space up here. It's very clean. How much do you pay a month for this space? I pay about $7,000 a month. $7,000 $7, a month. $7,000 a month for this. And this is, in your space, is half the size of this or smaller, huh? What do you pay for that? Uh, we have we have 800 square feet that we uh, have access to all the time. Uh, but then we have another thousand square feet of lobby space that we have only on Sunday mornings, and we pay twenty eight hundred dollars a month for that. So I bring that up to say, uh, most preachers or people would be thinking finances. That's that's what would be there with list number one. But he he's just looking for people to help him. So I want to encourage the people watching the video to one way we can help is by giving the missions. Another way we can help is by. Uh, Sweating bugs away. Another way we can help is by praying. There's, we can always pray. Uh, you can even, when you make a pledge um, financially, you can also make a prayer pledge. And I would just, I just wanted you guys to see that Hawaii is not all sandy beaches and uh, hula dancers. Um, thanks for what you guys are doing over here. Yes, sir. 
All right. Thank you. Brother Todd's been going nonstop since he arrived about a week and a half ago. Uh, we've had him in, I've had him in uh, a couple of different Christian schools. I've had him uh, teaching in the Christian school our uh, self-defense class uh, during PE. And uh, the videographer right here had the opportunity to have him in uh, as a mixed group with her um, uh, lady students as well. Uh, but then another blessing came, one of our members who is on Schofield uh, reached out to his commander and asked if we could get Brother Todd in there to uh, teach combative uh, during PT time for the soldiers. And it worked out, Brother Todd and I, we went up there the next day, the next morning, early in the morning, and um, <clears throat> started off with about 50 soldiers, but it ended up uh, dwindling down to about 25, which is a good group. Uh, Brother Todd gave them some great instruction and then had free liberty to preach the gospel to them. And about out of those 25 people, I think 13 uh, raised their hand indicating they trusted Christ as Savior. I was able to give a gospel tract out to everybody that was there uh, in that area. And so the Lord used him, uh, not to mention other opportunities that I've been with him where he's uh, led somebody to the Lord, witnessed to somebody, and uh, seen them saved. Uh, one distant relative of mine, um, he was able to lead to the Lord at a restaurant. Um, and so that's a, that's a huge blessing. But um, man, it's, to think of everything, how the Lord's blessed this past week, I need to, I need to write that down and, and take notes to refer to it. Uh, it's, there's been so many blessings. So, all right. All this right. Is, well, I just wanted you guys to have some perspective. Um, pray for the missionaries on the fancy islands. Pray for the missionaries on the little dirty islands. Pray for the missionaries all around the world. Amen. Hey there, this is Axel and Rocky, and today Axel made a very important decision. He's been wondering and talking about being saved for a while and uh, getting baptized, and um, but then today uh, we talked about how we're all sinners, and he knows that he's a sinner, right? You know that, right? Yeah. And because we're sinners, where do we deserve to go? down to hell yes but God doesn't want us to go there does he no. so what did he do so that we can go to heaven he died on the cross he died on the cross for our sins yep and what do we have to do in order to to go to heaven because of that because to get saved. how do we get saved 
by believing that he died on the cross and he got buried and he rose again. And then you need to ask him to save you, right? Yes. Did you ask him to save you today? Where were you when you asked him to save you? On the couch right right there on that building bar on the couch and I'm talking with Pastor Sam. Who's Pastor Sam? Yeah! <laughs> um, so did you ask Jesus to be your savior? Yes. Yep, so now if you die someday, where are you gonna go? What's up there? Heaven. Heaven, all right, love you, buddy. Love you. We're gonna baptize you someday, right? With my nanny and papa. Okay, I guess we'll wait I for will, I will tell you, because they're gonna be here on Christmas Eve. Okay. Ho, 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 when the cause is going to town. Amen.